You have tuned in for Start With Power. This is the Power Management for Contractors presentation. And uh, should be a very good webinar with a lot of very practical information that all of us can use. This is, uh, this is uh, one that uh, strikes to almost every aspect of, uh, of the business and commercial enterprises. So uh, we'll get on with that in just a few moments. But first, uh, a couple of uh, preliminary announcements. First of all, I'm uh, the guy on the left-hand side of the screen. I'm located in Madison at FDW. I'm Kevin Peckham, the moderator. And uh, to the right on the screen, uh, uh, looking much more handsome, is Rob Harris. He's our presenter today from Furman. And uh, so uh, with his uh, musician background and a power trio, no less, uh, Rob is in a, uh, a very uh, well-informed position to uh, be our presenter today. So Rob, uh, say hi to everybody. Well, hello, everyone. Good morning. We're going to go over, uh, in part, uh, a lot about, uh, you know, power management and, and uh, you know, the place to start, obviously, is going to be with power. Uh, if your power is not correct, uh, most likely the equipment you have is not going to work correct in the first place. You know, it's um, when you're coming up to a client, obviously, the, the most important question is, is you know, what are we going to plug all this stuff into? Obviously, uh, the wall being the culprit that's going to deliver whatever's dirty coming from the utility company uh, is not a good choice. Of course, a plastic power strip uh, get, may deliver power somewhat, but as you can see, as, as time goes on, uh, loose ends, whatnot, you know, it's really not a good method of uh, providing power to everything. Uh, and you're going to see in a bit here why you want to select Furman. Uh, Furman has been uh, industry standard for over 45 years, and uh, with that, we'll go into, into a little bit of the technologies in a bit here so you can see why. So why should you specify power management with every installation? First thing would be profit. It's actually a win-win for the client and the contractor. You know, it's a high value with benefits for every system with a high profit margin. You know, the other portion is customer service. Uh, proper AC protection and filtration ensures the systems are minimized while IP control technology provides, uh, you know, remote troubleshooting and service capabilities. Uh, the other portion of that would be system performance and reliability, which is probably the top portion of things. Uh, because if you've got good performance and reliability, uh, the customer service aspect uh, will come in less and less because everything will be working correctly and, uh, you know, ensure that you don't have a downtime. You know, and the Furman products are designed specifically for the needs of sensitive AV and digital components to allow them to perform at their highest level and avoid lockups, premature failures, or system downtimes. Uh, why recommend Furman with every installation? Uh, Furman has been voted a top uh, management brand for Pro AV Magazine for multiple years now, as well as trusted by many uh, top clientele. Uh, Furman's exclusive technologies such as, such as SMP, Lift, EVS, Smart Sequencing, and Blue Bolt, uh, you know, are not available anywhere else, and we'll go over those technologies. Uh, and solutions for every system, a wide range of products provide the right solutions to fit needs of any system size, budget, or application. Let's get into the technology, why you want to pick Furman. Now, with standard search suppression, uh, it is sacrificial in nature, and Furman makes sacrificial stuff, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, the bottom line, though, is once it's done its job, it's going to sacrifice itself and be deemed no longer good. Also, years of, of little small spikes and surges going over it will eventually cause that circuit to fail. And it's not it's a bad thing, but, you know, basically just have equipment or, excuse me, surge suppression that will wear out over time. Uh, MOVs in themselves uh, have a lifespan of roughly around five years of, uh, you know, moderate use. Now, when we're talking about Furman's top-notch SMP technology, we now use a series of components that allow that energy to be dissipated and not delivered to the equipment afterwards without compromising the surge suppression. Literally, that circuit there can take 3,000 amp, 6,000 volt hits as fast as a nanosecond multiple times and dissipate the energy without your equipment ever seeing it or the Furman going down in the process. So you have a mission critical kind of thing where the Furman is going to stay up and running. 
Now there are other non-sacrificial designs that are out there, and they're they're good in design, absolutely. Um, the thing that they lack, though, is they do have a pretty high let-through voltage when that that uh, nanosecond happens. Uh, the Furman SMP on the left there, you can see basically it peaks out at about 178 volts, uh, and that's at a, a peak point. It's about 137 RMS, and then. With the competitor's one, you see there's about a let through of about 428 uh, volts. At that point, you know, basically, as the equipment gets small spikes and surges, it's actually going to deteriorate uh, the, the equipment over time and not allow it to work correctly and to lose it. Uh, Furman's SMP technology has been out for over 12 years. Uh, literally, uh, I'm also not only the sales and technical trainer, I was the uh, the head of tech support for 12 years uh, for the power brands. Um, and also I'm the artist relations manager. So I deal with everybody you could think of from Aerosmith to Lady Gaga. Uh, th this equipment literally with the SMP technology uh, has now been out for about 12 years. And we have over 950,000, almost a million units worldwide. And we have yet to see one unit ever go down for a catastrophic failure, literally nothing out of 12 years. And that's, you know, on tour going from Dubai to, you know, uh, to Asia, to wherever you're at, basically, um, you know, uh, and then back to the States, you know, this stuff's been on tour with everybody around the world and you haven't seen, uh, you know, anything to go down. And that was me head of tech support. So if something would have went down and within 12 years, I would have heard about it. So it's a proven circuit by all means. So there's another type. It's not just about transient surges and really fast nanosecond stuff coming through, but you also have overvoltage scenarios where voltage goes high and stays high. We're going to take a look at what a surge strip uh, exposed to extreme voltage condition uh, can, can do here. So right now you're going to see we're taking a step-up transformer and it, it's applying 200 volts. As you see, the unit had sacrificed itself there a second ago. Unfortunately, with plastic power strips, there is no way for that energy, if it keeps going, uh, to stop that energy. And uh, as you can see, this plastic power strip is really not uh, enjoying the energy being let here. And I mean, it can turn into a catastrophic failure, just like you saw there. Literally, that's, you know, ABS uh, plastic there that's supposed to be, you know, fire resistant, but it's not fireproof by all means. So that's why you don't want to use plastic power strips, folks. With Furman's EVS, extreme voltage shutdown technology, we're actually able to take a look at that voltage coming in. Uh, you know, nominally should be 120 volts. You know, a little bit outside of there is not a bad deal. But with our a EVS technology, anything over a third of a second longer than 30, uh, 137 volts, it will actually disconnect from the line. Uh, once the voltage comes back into a safe range, you can turn the unit back off and on, or some of them actually automatically reset, and it will come back into play, stopping that cooking from happening that you saw with that plastic power strip. You can imagine if that was the gear plugged into there directly. Now, it's not just about uh, the protection aspect, but it's also about performance. So Furman has what's called LIFT, or linear filtration technology. And this technology gets rid of your EMI and RFI noise. If you look at the image on the left, you'll see the blue line represents the incoming AC unfiltered noise. And then that green line is just a typical EMI RFI noise filter. And starting from left to right, You'll see there's subwoofer frequencies going through the full audio bandwidth and then out through high def video. Uh, and as you can see, basically it's doing nothing through the sub range, uh, going through the full audio bandwidth and then out through high def video. It's kind of looks like a roller coaster. But when you look at the right hand side and Furman's lift technology, now you see that blue line, uh, you know, same line there for noise, but that green line is reducing the noise starting at subwoofer frequencies about minus 10 dB, goes through the full audio bandwidth and out through high def video by the time it gets to the one gig range or more, it's basically about 100 dB. So talk about reducing the noise and getting rid of, you know, things that can couple into your audio and video and, and you know, make lackluster performance. Furman's there to get rid of that noise and to give you positive uh, performance on your equipment. Now, there's also voltage regulation, uh, Furman's true RMS voltage regulation. We have a way to take, if you have, uh, you know, a finicky area 
maybe it's a rural area or, you know, just somebody on a bad grid that's known. Uh, we have a way we use a multiple tap transformer. Basically, it senses the input voltage coming in and it uses either small, longer or shorter windings in the transformer to reroute that through the transformer to bring the voltage back to a nominal 120 volts. So literally, our regulators can take anything from 137 uh, to 90, so 90 to 137 to reverse that, and then it'll put out 115 to 125 to your equipment. So that big window of 90 to 137 and the small window of uh, 115 to 125, stabilizing the environment. Power sequencing as well, uh, you know, obviously you guys are, are working with that. Uh, we're gonna get into Furman's smart sequencing technology. Uh, with this is just a standard, you know, front of house equipment room and a couple of, you know, stage left and right clusters here that you would want to sequence on properly. Obviously, if you have amplifiers on and you turn on your mixing console, you get a big pop uh, that can also blow out voice coils and speakers and cause other damage. So it's important to sequence things up and down properly. Uh, first little example here is you can have a small uh, corporate training auditorium kind of thing uh, using a Furman RS2 to trigger on a CN1800S uh, the front and then a CN2400S uh, at the amplifier rack behind a podium. Uh, the, the beauty about smart sequencing is that you can do it all with two wires and just daisy chaining the units and changing a dip switch. Uh, example two is going to show a larger, you know, medium to large house of worship or uh, other, you know, application that would be similar. Uh, with this, you can also tie the system into a fire alarm to actually force shut off of everything immediately. Um, and with this, we're using a CN1800S, which is our 15 amp guy, CN2400S for amplifier rack behind stage, and then uh, the CN20MPs uh, for your left and right clusters. This would be um, that first image I showed you how we applied it. Now with the CN1800S and 2400S smart sequencers, these are not just a sequencing device, but these are full on conditioner. These have the SMP lift and EVS technologies. It has a smart sequencing. Basically it's a bi-directional communication where you're only using two wires to go between the devices. Uh, you can daisy chain uh, multiple units up a thousand feet apart. Uh, you can also send RS-232 command set to the first unit in the chain and control the entire system. Uh, these also have legacy support that are compatible with all uh, third-party sequencing products as well um, as Furman's, um, you know, older technology. We're using dry contact closures, so all this stuff will accept dry contact closures, turn off and on according with what the, the signal is being sent to them. And they're also Blue Bolt compatible, which is our cloud-based service uh, where you can monitor and, uh, you know, go ahead and uh, basically gives you a full power management um, software from the internet in itself. One thing to keep in mind, when you're talking about the contractor series, these all have a 15-year warranty. So it's the CN1800S, CN2400S, CN15MP, and CN20MP. This is a long-term investment for the client. So this is a good sales point for you guys when you go out there, as opposed to them buying the, you know, three-year uh, M8S that is a, you know, uh, sacrificial sequencer. They can get into a serious uh, conditioner sequencing system that will give them a full 15 years of investment on their, on their uh, system. So we're going to look at just the front and sides of this. This is actually showing security covers. And then with those security covers off, you have a momentary button here. Uh, obviously, LEDs to show you sequencing and what's going on with the connectivity between units. Uh, you've got multiple um, dip switches. Yeah, if you guys are familiar with the old firm and stuff, you used to have to remove the top cover and change jumpers. Uh, well, that was a nightmare. Obviously, we listened to everybody after many years, and we came up with this system where it's just dip switches on the front to do all the control. And then, of course, you've got your circuit breaker on the front, and then, of course, a remote key uh, to go ahead and control that unit directly from that, that um, unit as a standalone. Just showing a little close-up of the uh, dip switches and what they do. Basically, first three are for timing of the unit. Uh, number four is for a uh, fire uh, alarm contact closure, normally open or closed, 12 volt on or off, ground on, momentary maintained. Uh, those are for the incoming, um, the incoming Phoenix connector on the back. Uh, this is the most important switch here, primary or secondary. 
first unit in the chain is always going to be set to primary. So that dip switch will be up. Every unit after the first one, just set that dip switch eight to down because they're secondary after everybody else. And you just daisy chain them together and you're pretty much ready to go. Uh, EBS auto or manual. This would be if you have a finicky power problem going on. Um, you know, they come set automatic. Uh, that therefore, if the voltage goes into an extreme voltage range of below 90 or above 137, it'll actually, when the voltage comes back in a safe range, they kick back on by themselves. There's no manual reset needed. Some folks wanted the manual option, so we just left that in there. Um, that would be somewhere where you'd have to go there manually and reset things. Uh, the back of the unit here, basically you're looking at uh, on the far left, unswitched uh, duplex there. So those are always on. And then your delays one, two, and three, along with the Phoenix connectors for control and connectivity. And uh, notice that the CN2400S, the 20 amp guy comes with a 20 amp plug. So that's your NEMA 520P. Uh, just keep in mind that you'll have to have, you know, dedicated 20 amp circuit with a 20 amp plug there if you want to use 20 amp products. This is just a close up of those green Phoenix connectors in the back. So the left would be the remote port. That's where you're going to tie in your key switch or possibly uh, possibly a dry contact closure coming from another system, maybe um, you know, a control device of some sort. Uh, smart sequencing port there is for your uh, tying the units together to get them to talk to one another out and in, pretty self-explanatory. Forced off is where you would tie a fire alarm if you were looking to use a fire alarm system to shut things down quickly and safely. And then with each one of these CN1800S and 2400S, it also has a relay built into it, uh, single pole double throw. So it's basically got a way to control another dry contact device. So if you've got some of those legacy products out there, that would be the way to do it. Uh, and of course, your RS-232 connection for uh, you know your controllability. The CN15 and 20 MPs are your remote guys. They will also tie into the whole system. If you've got something where you want to use these standalone, you can use them as a standalone device as well and control them with a dry contact closure. Or these are smart sequencers. So if you have a, a scenario where you just want to use CN15 and 20 MPs, these guys, you can actually tie together with two wires. You can do up to 50 in the chain. And then everybody will be controlled by the first unit in the chain. You will have to use a dry contact closure. There's no switch on the unit. Um, but if you're using a dry contact closure between 12 volt rem right out of the box, shorted is off, opened is on. You can control the whole system from one unit at that point. These guys also have EBS, so they're extreme voltage shutdown. Uh, and they will be completely compatible with the Blue Bolt devices, but you would have to have a CN1800S or 2400S uh, as they are, you know, there's no way to communicate with them directly. You need a, um, a rack mount unit at the head. Remember, all contractor series, 15 years. I just can't bring up the importance on that. It's just uh, helps, helps sell through for you. Um, it's really easy to, to go, hey, this is a 15 year investment. Cost you a little bit more in the front, but we've got your back. So with that, here's our BBRS232 adapter. This enables uh, Blue Bolt IP control and monitoring uh, with the smart sequencers. And basically take and tie that to the first one on the chain. Uh, you would go to mybluebolt.com and create an account. Uh, add that BBRS232 like I showed you there to that. And then from there, it will actually populate with the devices that are in the chain afterwards. So to look at that first one, your primary device, and then anybody afterwards, and they're just showing a CN1800S and 2400S, but it actually will look at the CN15 MPs and 20 MPs as well. And this gives you a way to control the entire system remotely, as well as uh, set up scheduled commands. Uh, so you can actually have it shut down at midnight and turn on at 6 a.m. if you want, you know, to save uh, that vampire voltage bleeding out uh, and cost you money and, and find ways to save money on the power end and also not wearing out your gear from it being on 24-7. Uh, we also have uh, our firm and uninterruptible power supplies. There's an F1000 uh, UPS and an F1500 UPS. These guys are designed 
it's not a typical UPS. These guys have SMP lift and EVS. So these are designed for audio video application. These guys are there not only for mission critical to make sure stuff doesn't go down, but also to get rid of the noise starting at subwoofer frequencies going through the full audio bandwidth and out through high def video. So these things are going to provide super clean power so you get the full performance out of the devices as well. 1000 VA is about, you know, five, five amps, um, you know, uh, total current draw. Uh, this also has AVR, so it's an automatic voltage regulator. So this does regulation as well. A little bit different than the transformer I showed you earlier, but still a uh, good design. Um, and basically you can see through the rest, there's eight outlets on the back. Uh, there's a critical bank and a non-critical bank. And what that's all about is basically you can set a threshold to where once the battery reaches a certain level, it turns off the non-critical bank, applying the rest of the battery power for your critical bank. So you can get a longer runtime out of that. Also has IR control, so you can actually send codes to it to shut down. Uh, say you have this hooked up to a projector. You can have when the battery or uh, when the power goes out, the battery reaches a certain level, it'll actually send a command to your projector to shut it down safely so you're not shocking those bulbs inside uh, that cost you a ton of money inside a projector. So it has, allows for a safe way to shut down on those systems. And then of course, RS-232 control. This one, it's not ready for the BBRS-232 yet, so it's uh, only RS-232 controls, just keep that in mind. Uh, the F 1500 UPS, same thing, only this guy is 1500 BA, uh, SP Lift and EVS as well. Uh, and on the back, there's four banks essentially. There's two critical and two uh, non critical, just like the other one. This actually um, is also a true sine wave, where the other one is a two step um, square wave or modified sine wave. Um, it doesn't matter a whole lot. But if you were using a volt, you know, you want to use something with an extreme voltage shutdown, you wouldn't be able to use it after the uh, the 1000 UPS because if it goes in that mode, it, pro it provides a uh, different type of sine wave. I'm going a little deep in the woods here. Uh, it's just stuff from my tech years, so I apologize for that. Um, but with this one, it gives a true R R RMS sine wave. So basically, it's a nice, smooth sine wave to everything. And this, you could use anything with EVS afterwards. Also has an external battery pack that you can add. So it will quadruple the amount of runtime that this unit can have. And then there's a communication card for the RS-232 and then your IR controls. And then it has a USB, and that's just for communication directly with a computer. Uh, that's all that provides. Um, but with that communication card, you can actually swap that out for our Blue Bolt CB2 card. And this now makes it a Blue Bolt compatible device. So now you have the freedom of a true plug and play cloud-based secure power management option uh, where you basically can control the entire system, allow it to give you alerts for you know battery discharging, charging, voltage regulation, power loss, uh, all kinds of other things. Uh, also, it shows you energy management, what you're drawing for current and whatnot. Um, and this you can also set up schedule commands. Really a nice way to be able to handle a client so you don't have to roll out a truck somewhere to cycle on and off something that's locked up because it saw an inconsistency in voltage somehow or it's just a finicky processor. So a great way to have a full uh, control and power management system. So we're gonna get into our Furman line here. This is the Merit X series. These are all sacrificial devices, still a great way to go, better filtration than what's out there and also steel chassis. Uh, with that, we'll start with the M8X2, uh, single rack space piece, 15 amps. Uh, basically it has a protection okay, so if, the, if it ever did sacrifice itself, that LED would be off and you'd know uh, you'd have to switch out the unit and it's got eight outlets on the back, one on the front. They're wall wart spaced and, uh, you know, just a really good little steel chassis uh, way of, um, you know, uh, providing a power distribution point with some con conditioning and protection. M8 LX, same thing, only now we've added the famous Furman pullout lights so you can illuminate the rack. Uh, basically pull out those lights, turn up the knob there, and now you have light that illuminates uh, from the top down. And then the MADX, same thing with the pullout lights. Now we've added a digital multimeter. This shows you the voltage coming out of the wall in a digital fashion, so you can see what's coming out of the wall as far as voltage goes. We also have 
the M8S. This is a great standalone sequencer. Um, you know, uh, this isn't a blue, uh, excuse me, a smart sequencer. So, you know, you couldn't add it and needs a dry contact closure to control it. This uh, inlet over here is just that. It's only meant for our RS1 uh, or 2 key switches or a dry contact closure. And then you've got your control over here and then delay adjustment over here as well. Um, and with that, uh, one unswitched bank and then your delays one, two, and three, which would be, of course, Illuminate on the front, along with your power and protection OK LEDs. There's also the M8X AR. This is our entry level into 15 amp voltage regulation. This guy, it is sacrificial in nature. So it's a standard level of surge protection and filtration, but it does add EVS. It does have that extreme voltage shutdown. So if things were gonna stay on, uh, it would actually open up the EVS circuit, make sure things don't sit there and just cook versus the other guys would just stop delivering power altogether once they've sacrificed themselves. These, this guy will actually save itself for another day typically, unless it slips through faster than a third of a second, that's where it will sacrifice itself. But if it's a third of a second and it's rising, this thing will cut off. And then once that voltage, uh, you know, comes back into a safe range, you can kick this guy back on. Uh, you know, total of nine outlets, they're all regulated and filtered. Uh, and then you've got a voltmeter on the front and a little regulation light lets you know um, if it's in extreme voltage shutdown. Um, also, if you're drawing too much current, uh, 15 amps total. I would keep anything that's at 15 amps at a 12 amps max RMS current draw just because you want to have some headroom there. You don't want to choke the thing out. Worst case scenario is if you drew too much current, the little 15 amp breaker would pop out just like the old turkey, uh, you know, when you're cooking. The you know, old days, I don't even know if they do the turkeys with the buttons anymore, but if they do, it's the same aspect. But he's got a little button pops out and then, you know, hey, she's done. And then with this, you can pop the button back in. Unfortunately, the turkey, you're kind of done and you're eating dry turkey, but uh, hopefully you got a lot of gravy. <laughs> Classic series. Here's where we're getting into the pro level stuff here. Uh, we're going to take a look at our classic series, which have ultra rugged all steel chassis, high end rush power switches capable of handling the largest amplifiers within the current aspect of the unit, of course. Uh, convenient features such as our pullout lights, which are LEDs on these guys. The other guys, they're uh, incandescent when you're talking about the merit series. Classic series, they're actually an LED, so there's no heat. Uh, a lot less current draw. And in some cases, we actually have USB chargers on some of the 20 amp devices. Um, and then, of course, wall wart spacing, which you see in the in the Merit series, too. The PL8C, here we go. We got eight outlets in the back. And when you get into the classic series, now you have two banks of separation. So if you have a DC power supply that's making noise into, say, an amplifier, you have a way to separate those now. You have uh, two banks of separation. So you put your DC wall ward on the bank one side on the left your amplifier on the right-hand side, and now you've separated the, the power supplies from one another to get rid of noise. Uh, the also um, have the pull-out lights, as you can see. The on-off um, pot that's here, the potentiometer, is also an on-off switch, so it's a momentary button. So if you ever get one of these, plug it in, and you go, hey, the lights aren't turned on. We'll turn that knob all the way up, press that button in momentarily, and all of a sudden you'll see the lights come on. That was probably one of the most que asked questions when I was in tech support. Um, and it was an easy answer, um, and I'm glad I could share with you today. If it ever fades away, we're always here for you to answer those questions. Uh, with that, you also have a protection OK and an extreme voltage uh, LED. That would tell you if the unit's seen you know, over 137 volts RMS. Another beauty about these guys is they have a BNC connector on the back uh, to add a gooseneck lamp so you can illuminate the rear of the rack. So if you're tired of the flashlight on your head or in your teeth, Literally, there's a way to illuminate the rear of the rack just by adding a gooseneck lamp. Furman makes a nice little gooseneck uh, lamp, um, but there are other manufacturers out there, and it'll work with anything uh, that is an industry standard with a BNC connector. PL Plus C, same thing, you know, SP lift and EVS. Forgot to mention that, of course, when you step in the classic side, SP lift and EVS. So these are all top level conditioners, non sacrificial surge protection, extreme voltage shutdown, and linear filtration. When you go to the PL Plus C, same thing as the PL 8 C, only now you've added a voltmeter on the front that shows you the voltage coming out of the wall. Great little diagnostic tool. And then when you stepped over to the PL Plus DMC, 
Now you've added a digital voltmeter that shows you the voltage coming out of the wall. And the cool thing about these guys is they're also a current meter. So if you click that button on the right-hand side, it says line voltage and current, it'll actually switch over to showing you how much current draw is happening. So uh, with the devices you have plugged in, how hard they're working, what is the current draw for all that stuff you got plugged in. It takes the guesswork out of how much current is happening uh, through the device. So great uh, little diagnostic tools, I like to call them. Uh, also, if you hold down that little button, it will actually dim the meter. So if it's too bright, you can actually dim it down uh, to something that isn't, uh, you know, stabbing you in the eyes as far as brightness. Pro Classic Series, these are all 20 amp devices, very similar to the 15 amp, but they can handle 20 amps worth of current draw, and they will have that NEMA 520P plug. With that, you're looking at uh, on the front, on the right-hand side, the on-off switch is also the circuit breaker for the unit. So it's a magnetic circuit breaker if you ever drew too much current. Basically flip it off and back on, and you're back up and running. Unlike the 15 amp guys, they have that button, and that's on the back of the unit. You'd have to go around to the back side and press it in. Uh, with these, the same thing, two banks, uh, so you can separate things and that VNC connector. Uh, with this guy, the P8 Pro C, you're not paying for any sort of meters or pull-out lights if you don't need them. That's the low cost, lowest cost 20-amp uh, device we make. PL Pro C, same thing as the P, you know, that P8 Pro C, but now we've had a voltmeter and uh, now a BNC connector for the front. So you can actually charge uh, your devices off of the front of this if you needed to. Guys that um, you know are backline techs or front of house. They love having that feature. Uh, it's a, just an easy way that you're not absorbing a plug on the system and you can actually go ahead, charge up your phone at that point in time. Uh, PL Pro DMC, same thing as the PL Plus DMC, but now you have that uh, USB charger. And then of course it's got the DMC, the dual meter uh, that shows you voltage and current coming out of the wall. AC215A, this is our most compact conditioner we can make that have S&P, lift, and EVS technology. So it's got that S&P and EVS to protect you against the fast transient spikes or those uh, big waves of uh, over voltage coming in. Uh, it also filters out things, a uh, great little steel chassis. It's got two uh, outlets. It's a 12 amp capacity in total. Great to throw up with a projector if they're not gonna do uh, you know, a battery backup or a home ran electrical to that with a um, battery on there. Uh, great thing to put in any spot you need to put remote behind panels as well. Um, wherever you could think of that you need a remote conditioner that's top level that's not going to go down on you. The Power Station series. So with these guys, uh, basically the PST2 plus 6 and the PST6 are both sacrificial in nature. Uh, when you step up the PST6, hey, cool, you got an aluminum chassis. Where the real difference happens is the PST8. Now you're into a strip format where it has pro-level conditioning and protection. You've got that S&P, EVS, and lift technologies. Uh, eight outlets on there. Uh, it's also got a couple of uh, uh, coax protection. So if you're looking to protect a uh, signal coming in from the outside so that lightning strike doesn't go through uh, your coax line and right into whatever cable box you have. You have a way to protect that signal line uh, to make sure it doesn't get to other things. And then it's got a couple of uh, tel telco protectors on there. When you step up to the PST8D, same thing. So if you get another set of coax protection, and then this has two banks. The four on the right are separate from the four on the left, and it gives you a way to segregate those power supplies for noise from one another. P1800AR, this is our top level 15 amp voltage regulator. So this does just like that transformer I showed you earlier um, and that M8XAR, this gives you that stabilized power where it'll take anything from, it's uh, actually 97 to 137. I think I said 90 to 137 earlier. It's actually 97 to 137. Operating voltage is 90. Uh, below that, it actually kicks off in the extreme voltage relay. Uh, with this guy, Got that dual meter feature, got the little USB connector on the front, it's 15 amps total. And uh, this will go ahead and stabilize that environment, as I talked about. 97 to 137, output 115 to 125, real small window, making everything run happy. P2400AR, the 20 amp version, uh, bigger brother there. Uh, as you can see, two outlets on the front, USB connector, uh, the, uh, the that dual meter on the front. Uh, when you go to the back, 
you now have two separate banks back there, total of 14 outlets on this guy, and you could draw a total of 20 amps current draw. I always recommend to bring that down a little bit, save you some headroom, about 17 amps max is what I would say RMS you can run through this. You can run 20 amps RMS, but if the voltage goes down a bit, it's going to select one of those other taps too, and that actually takes up a little bit of current draw. So 17 amps is where I would leave this maximum. Our big boy, the P3600ARG. This is a world use voltage regulator, power conditioner, and may not totally apply, but this is what's on the back line of a ton of folks, including uh, one, of, one of my artists uh, under the Furman Artist Program, which is Mr. Edward Van Halen. Uh, he's definitely a tone nut. I'm sure uh, a lot of you folks are probably familiar with him. He used Variax for many years to um, you know, try to stabilize that voltage before he went on, but then, uh, after that, I was up to the tech to kind of go over and look manually to adjust the voltage. But now that he's moved over to this P3600 ARG, he has his own essential power plant at that point in time. This thing will take anything from 80 to 280 volts and deliver 120 plus or minus. Uh, I think it's four volts on this one. It's a little bit tighter. Um, and this will be, you know, something that will keep everything stable. And this actually got Edward Van Halen away from using uh, Variax. With that, it's a true 30 amp device. So if you have a 30 amp application, this is a great way um, to go ahead and stabilize and create your own power grid. It's got the S&P lift and EVS. Obviously it does the voltage regulation, all that good stuff. Uh, another thing that's not listed here, but this is actually an isolation transformer too. So it's basically creating your own mini grid. Um, you know, It's gonna do quite a bit to get rid of noise and stuff on the AC line as well. Uh, on the back, you also have a 30 amp twist lock outlet. This is the inlet here. It comes with the um, L1430 uh, twist lock that you would wire up to your, your mains coming in. And, and then from there, you would distribute the power either out of that 30 amp twist lock. So if you have a 30 amp device, that's where you would tie it in is the 30 amp twist lock or your two uh, banks there with a total of 30 amps, but you can draw 20 amps out of one of these outlets RMS and then I would still say, you know, keep it around 27 amps RMS, um, you know, uh, you know, just to give you a little bit of headroom there. P2400 IT, the ultimate isolation transformer balance power piece. This guy is a 20 amp device. It's got a, uh, basically the um, two outlets on the front, the digital multimeter, the um, USB charger and the um, breaker on the front. On the back of this guy, this guy actually will isolate the whole rig. And in, in this case, if you have some sort of AC ground loop issue, this can actually lift ground on the secondary side and do it safely. Um, we use obviously, you know, a GF, GFI, and you've seen these before, ground fault interrupter or ground fault circuit interrupter is what they're known for. Seen them in your ba you know, bathroom famously. Uh, this will make sure if a ground ever became a hazard that it would kick off and make sure nobody dies. Um, which is always a great thing, of course. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, it is Halloween. I found a little comedy. I've been watching too many slasher flicks uh, all day, so I apologize for that. Uh, I digress. Anyway, uh, full isolation. So if you've got some sort of noise on the grid, the only thing that's not this thing couldn't take care of is double-digit gross harmonic distortion. And that would be something where you would bring in out the, um, you know, the utility company at that point in time to find out what's going on. If you want the ultimate in getting rid of noise, the P2400 IT is the way to go. We also have our power accessories. Uh, we have a plug lock, PFP. This is a great distribution device. You would plug this in the back of a conditioner as it is not conditioned or protected. Um, but say you've got a bunch of wall warts, you have more than three, you can slap them on this guy and plug this into the back of your conditioner and now you're fully protected, filtered and supplying uh, clean power to that. Or the D10 PFP, say you've, um, you're have you under you know, a 15 amp or 20 amp current draw and you just ran out of outlets, you need more distribution. This little D10 PFP guy here will allow you to you know plug in the devices that you need to, run that to the back of your power conditioner and now you have a, uh, a cost effective way to distribute power to your equipment. 
Here's our little SS6B. These are great little drop boxes. They have a 15 foot cord. They do have sacrificial surge protection and EMI and RFI filtration. Can also be used as a distribution point off the back of uh, you know another conditioner if need be. Uh, you don't want to daisy chain a bunch of things together. One of these off of a unit would be fine, but don't keep you know going out obviously chaining off of one another. Um, you know, it wouldn't be as bad as that plastic power strip, but that's why they tell you to not do that with plastic power strips and whatnot, as you can overload the, you know, the plastic power strip. And in the case of those, they obviously melt. Uh, worst case scenario with this is you may introduce noise more, or you would uh, trip the breaker at the um, first unit in the chain or possibly back at the panel, depending on how it's wired. Uh, rack lights are little gooseneck lamps. There's a way to actually illuminate a rack. We got a nice little single rack space piece with uh, some LEDs in the heads. Or here's that gooseneck lamp I was talking about. You can add that to the back of any of the classic series or other devices where you see a BNC connector. Pretty much uh, the Prestige series has that as well, that P1800AR. Um, and you can go ahead and illuminate the rear of your rack. And with that, that is what I have for you today, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we are now going to open up the lines for questioning and uh, uh, have Kevin uh, kick in here in a minute. Yep, we're good. Uh, Rob, can you hear me okay? I'm I can hear you. Yeah, I'm switching to a different Marvelous. computer. We had, uh, it wasn't power issues, but we had a little network issues that made it hard for people to hear what I was saying. So uh, we've moved to a different location here. But uh, excellent presentation. You uh, you did a great job covering the material because uh, uh, we ran the full uh, gamut of, uh, of uh, heavy-duty commercial installations right down to uh, very utilitarian things for very small, even basement studios and all that. Excellent job. We have a couple of questions lined up. Uh, first one that came in and uh, uh, kind of has to do with monitoring. So part of the question is uh, people buy uh, power conditioning equipment. They put it in place. Everything uh, works nicely. But oftentimes they really don't know uh, what is the quality of the power or what are the quality issues with the power that's coming in. Uh, mm -hmm. In the uh, uh, Blue Bolt monitoring, is there an indication, any sort of uh, a history of, of uh, uh, of, of uh, quality monitoring that can be useful for people to assess what difficulties they're actually encountering? There is a history that's kept inside of uh, in, in uh, mybluebolt.com. It's, uh, it's based on, um, it's not a, you know, uh, millisecond by millisecond kind of thing. It does a, an overall average of every six minutes. Um, and with that, that would be found back in, um, you know, inside of mybluebolt.com under the um, overall usage area, there there is a section there that will show you your voltage as well as your current. Um, there's also alerts there for high voltage and low voltage. Um, uh, also, if a breaker trips, that'll let you know um, when you get those alerts that, oh, hey, I got this high voltage alert. Oh, something obviously went over 137 volts for longer than a third of a second. Or, oh, I got a low voltage alert. Oh, that I know something went below 90 there. Those are a really good snapshot. If you ever needed to drill down more than that, say you had a super problematic area, we can help. Uh, basically, you would contact tech support and ask them to drill down further. And that's at a uh, the um, engineering level that uh, they have those tools. And it's, yeah. it's uh, you know, something where the, I've found throughout the 12 years of being in tech support, a lot of times just those emails are what really, um, you know, set you up to, to let you know that you have a problem on site. And they let you know that threshold, hey, I'm going over 137. Well, at that point, you don't really care what it is. You know it's way too high. So we got to get something in there, you know, electrician or talk to the power utility company to find out what's going on. Uh, beyond that, there are log meters you can rent from folks that will tell you full on, can, you know, um, what's going on with the, you know, everything from gross harmonics to power factor to, you know, obviously the simple stuff like the voltage high and low um, and, uh, you know, current draw on the line. Um, sometimes the, uh, the provider, your power provider will, uh, help with that as well. That's usually harder though, and it's more like pulling teeth because they really don't want to do anything for you. Um, but you might find someone on a good day that would help you. But there are other ways to do it. Um, but like I said, with Blue Bolt, 
Uh, if it's beyond that level, you really wanted to drill down, you would just contact tech support and we can get into times and days and, and literally into, into, you know, nanosecond kind of stuff. Well, microsecond, not nanosecond, but really, I mean, it would give you a good in-depth on what's going on with the power quality in that place. Excellent. That's good. I think that uh, that kind of deals with it. I mean, it is an issue that uh, once you have all of this protection and monitoring and uh, not monitoring, but uh, protection in place, uh, oftentimes you really don't know well, what kind of contamination you've got incoming. So it is good to know. Obviously, you want to start out with the cleanest power as possible and not rely totally on uh, on the processing to handle it. Another question came in. Uh, uh, I will try and uh, uh, read the fine print here. It says, I have a cluster of EV powered speakers in the ceiling, but want to power them on from the sound booth, which is about 50 to 60 feet away. Uh, also, I uh, want to tie in my equipment rack and mixing consoles uh, all into one sequencer. And so their question is basically a recommendation. What would be the best Berman sequencer solution for this application? Marvelous. Yeah, that's where you would go into that contractor series. Now, you would need multiple units because you're probably dealing with multiple circuits. Uh, the front of house, I would put uh, a CN1800S. And then where you have, uh, you're going to need to run two wires. You can use, you know, mic line if you need to. If you're, if you're, you know, in a pinch, you can run, you know, if you've got Cat5 already ran, you can utilize that. Basically, 24 gauge uh, twisted pair or larger would be the way to go. And then for the clusters up in the ceilings, you'd probably use some CN15 uh, MPs or CN20 MPs. And you basically just apply those per circuit and you pl take that box, you know, drill or screw or strap it into the ceiling somehow. Um, that's a, there's flanges on the sides and there's, you know, creative ways to do it as well. Um, and you would just take and daisy chain those units together. Uh, the first one in the chain would be your primary device. All devices after the first one, you would take that dip switch eight, put it in the down position for everybody else after the first one, and you just daisy chain them together. Leave all the other dip switches where they were. Just change that dip switch eight and put that in the down position, daisy chain them all, two wires going from one to another, and you'll have a full sequencing system that will go ahead and sequence up and down right from that CN1800S at the front of the rack, or the front of house, pardon me. Oh, that's excellent. Uh, that... Uh... That actually is uh, well described in the website, too. There's a lot of good uh, illustrations that I've seen that actually show this sort of installation. So uh, very good. Uh, that's all I've got for incoming questions. I think you did a great job actually uh, covering the material so well. I don't think there's uh, uh, at this point a lot of uh, mystery. So I think uh, at this <laughs> point, uh, people will uh, utilize the website. Certainly, if they have questions, they can contact us here at uh, FDW. I can uh, pass those along to Rob and get some uh, directed responses if necessary, but uh, certainly utilize the website and all the good material that's on there. It's uh, very useful information. Well, I uh, want to remind folks, uh, please do take the uh, survey at the end of it as we wrap this up. Uh, the survey does help us uh, do better webinars in the future, and uh, so that's a value to us. Rob, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, a lot of great information here, and as I mentioned earlier, it's a, rec it's a recorded event, so this is available if, uh, if you have friends in the Industry that you would like to uh, uh, point them to this uh, webinar, they can uh, certainly uh, monitor it as well. I uh, appreciate it. That will conclude uh, our webinar for today. Thank you, Rob. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, hopefully everybody got something out of this. I think they, they did, and we took a lot of mystery out of things. Um, and of course, if you need anything, obviously contact Kevin. Uh, you know, he is a guru at this stuff, and he can get to the other guru, which would be me. <laughs> <laughs> Guru's got to stick together. Thank you, Rob. Yes, absolutely. My pleasure. Take care.